Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. Thank you for joining me. So as you can see, in just over 18 hours, a new spider tournament will be launching in conjunction with the current fusion event. In addition, there's something else that's really important that is going on right now. As you can see here from the purple icon, we have a 100% gear removal cost reduction for the next three and a half days. That makes now the perfect time to start experimenting with rebuilding champions and team compositions for various dungeons. So I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to give you a new hard mode dungeon guide, this time on the spider's den. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover the differences between the normal spider fight and the hard mode spider fight. I'm gonna give you suggestions for some team compositions and for some champions and some builds that you can use to ensure success. So if you're looking to up your game and get into the hard mode version of the spider's den, then this video's got you covered. I hope you're ready for it. Let's get started. Just a quick reminder, I have launched my new second YouTube channel. It is called Call Red Plays. No games attached because we're gonna play a whole bunch of games over there. We are currently playing Pal World. When I say we, it's my editor, whose name is Sun, and myself. And we will be live streaming tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a pretty silly stream. It's really a fun game. It's a lot different than Raid. So if you're looking for some different content or maybe you're just a Pal World player and you wanna find some fun Pal World content, hopefully you'll enjoy our live stream. Also, don't forget to hit the like button for this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and consider joining our Discord community. Thanks so much, now let's get to the video. Okay, here I am on hellhades.com. I come here all the time, but one of the great things about this website is the Raid Stages tool. So you go to the Raid Shadow Legends drop-down menu over in the bottom right, you see tools. You wanna go to Raid Stages tool. Now this is going to give you the stats for every single mob and boss in every single fight in the game. So all you have to do is choose your encounter. And we're gonna go ahead to dungeons. Then we're gonna choose the spider's den and then hard mode difficulty. And we can go and check any stage. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually we're gonna look at normal and we're gonna check stage 25. I wanna show you stage 25 because we wanna see the stats and compare them. So there are only a few stats here that we really have to worry about. The first one is speed. And as you can see, the boss goes at 95 speed and the spiderlings go at 150 speed. That's relatively slow and it's easy to be faster than those speeds, even in the relatively early game. The other thing that we wanna consider is the accuracy and resistance. Really, we care about the accuracy the most because we wanna be able to land our debuffs on both the spiderlings and the boss. And you can see the boss and the spiderlings have the same resistance and accuracy. And so we need 225 accuracy to overcome the 200 resistance. That's really the big number there. So 95 speed and we need 225 accuracy at stage 25 of normal mode. Now let's go look at the difference with the hard modes. So let's start here with stage one of hard mode. And as you can see, the speed on the boss has only gone up to 100. The spiderlings are still at 150 and the resistance is exactly the same at 200, meaning we need the same amount of accuracy. So realistically, if you can do stage 25, you can do stage one of hard mode. You don't really have to change anything. I'm gonna go over the differences in the fight, so there may be some considerations about that and what champions you bring in. But you can see the stats are basically the same, and the fight's not so different that your normal Spider 25 team won't work. So you can probably do at least stage one of hard mode. Now, the speeds increase and the resistances increase as you go up each stage, as do the HP levels, the attack and the defense and all of that. So let's go ahead and look at stage six. Now, the reason I like to look at stage six is because it is a void affinity stage. It's also where the stats really start to ramp up. So this is sort of the plateau beyond stage six. The stats can get really hard and high. And so if you don't have great gear, you might have trouble pushing beyond stage six. But most players who can get through stage one with a little tweaking can get up to stage six. You can see the boss speed here is 145 and the spider links still 150. They haven't gotten faster. But the important thing here is that the boss is a little bit slower than the spiderlings. That's also a very useful thing to know. In addition, the resistances have started to creep up, and so we need an accuracy of 285. Now, 285 is relatively high accuracy. 
Um, so you have to focus on getting the accuracy that you need for these dungeons. Clearly, this is a step up from the normal mode dungeon. Okay, now let's jump all the way up to stage 10. So here we are at stage 10, and as you can see, the speed of the spiderlings hasn't changed, but the boss is now at 245. That's very fast. It's a lot faster than the 95 that she was running it at stage 25 of normal mode. So, you know, you've got a lot more attacks here. Obviously, you want to be faster than Tainted Skavik. You need to be faster than this boss, either because you have turn meter fill and your fastest champion is faster, or just everybody's running fast. The accuracy that you need has jumped up all the way to 345. I just rounded up to a nice even 350. But you need to overcome that as well. And then obviously you can see the HP of the boss is almost 15 million at this point with a lot of attack and defense. So the stat requirements climb rapidly once you get to stage 7. Stage 7 through 10 really ramp up. So... For today's video, we're probably going to be taking on stage six just to show you the different team compositions and champions that you can bring. And then I'll show you my stage 10 hard mode spider boss team. Okay, so here we are in the spider's den and I'm just gonna go to stage six. It's a really good stage. You don't have to worry about weak hitting. Um, but let's go ahead and look at this fight now. So there are four differences between this fight and the normal mode fight that you really need to pay attention to. There are actually additional changes, but they're not all that significant. So I'm gonna cover the four big changes that you really need to think about when you're putting your team together, choosing your champions and your builds. Okay, so the first really big change here is that the boss is immune to decrease speed and turn meter reduction. That is typically a big focus of normal spider teams. You bring in a cold hard or you bring in a slow and some turn meter decrease. And that allows you to basically never give the boss a chance to go. The boss is likely to get turns here. You're going to have to deal with that. So that is the first big change that you want to consider. If you run any kind of turn meter reduction or slow, you know, in your composition, you need to pull that out for hard mode. Now, the second change is also in this vile constitution passive. And that is whenever an HP burn debuff is activated on tainty, tainted spiderlings, heals tainted scavig by 1% of her max HP. So this may make you think that HP burns aren't great, but they're still very good. Remember that an HP burn does 3%, I think it's 3% of max HP damage. So this just makes them a little bit less effective than they would be otherwise, but it doesn't actually negate their power. They're still very strong, and you're probably going to want to run HP burns if you're already running HP burns in stage 25. In addition, just as part of this change, you also want to know that the boss herself is immune to HP burns, um, so that just means you're going to get 10 HP burns out there instead of 11. The spiderlings are not immune, but the boss is immune. And so that may change some ways that you deal with specific champions. In fact, one of the champions I use is Sissia Flame Tongue, and that changes the way I use her in this fight. And I'll go over that when we get to that point. The third change is still here in the Vile Constitution passive. This passive covers most of the major changes. And as you can see at the bottom, it says whenever a tainted spiderling dies, inflicts damage to the tainted scavig equal to 3% of her max HP. So when you kill a spiderling, it's basically a max HP hit against the boss, basically the size of an HP burn. So destroying spiderlings is actually a great choice here in hard mode, which is a little bit ironic because that's how we tend to deal with spider up to about stage 16 or so in normal mode. Early on, you don't worry about HP burns until you get close to stage 20 because they're really not necessarily necessary and they don't do as much damage until the HP pool gets really high. So we're kind of going backwards. We're going back to that early method of defeating Spider by just nuking out Spiderling. That's going to be at least part of our strategy. Okay, finally, there is the fourth major change, which is true for all of the hard mode bosses, which is Awakened Weakness. This decreases the damage inflicted by the boss for each Awakening level on the target champion. So if you have champions who are Awakened, they will take less damage. In addition, they increase the damage against the boss for their levels of Awakening. So you want to bring champions in here who have several stars of Awakening. If you can get them, you know, two, three, four stars is going to make a big difference. It's going to allow you to ease the pressure on the gear in terms of defensive stats at least or even in terms of like the damage stats that you put out you're still going to want your 100 crit rate and a bunch of crit damage and the accuracy to land the debuffs all of that stuff 
but this does make it a little bit easier to survive the fight and get multiple rounds in. And remember, in this fight, the boss will get some turns. It's going to be really hard for you to nuke this boss out before it gets at least one turn. Okay, so that is it for the major differences between normal mode and hard mode. There are some more small changes, and if you want to see it, you should always come here and read the guide. I highly recommend reading the in-game guides for all of the dungeons and the dungeon bosses. There's a lot of great information in here and it will help you understand the mechanics of the fight. Okay, so here I have put together a team. It is a relatively free to play friendly team. In fact, they're all free champions, although some of them are former login champions, so you may not have these champions. So here we've got Deacon Armstrong, Sill of the Drakes. We've got Wukong here, and then Artak and Mithrala. Now I'm gonna go over the roles that these champions are bringing. You don't need all of these specific champions, in fact, these aren't, this is not like a great composition. It's going to be an okay composition, but I just wanted to use champions that first of all had some awakenings, like, you know, had some stars. And then also I wanted to use free champions. So this is the team I put together. Now, Deacon Armstrong is going to help me reach the speeds I need because only Mithrala and Deacon are running faster than the boss. At the, actually, no, I'm sorry. We're at stage six right now. So we're all running faster than the boss. But if I were up at stage 10, this is, you know, how this would work. The speed aura and the turn meter increase would actually get everybody faster than the boss. That would be really important. Now, Wukong is here primarily just for direct damage, for bringing AoE damage to kill Spiderlings. That's all he's here for. Really, that's it. If he happens to be the Spiderling tank, that's even better because his revive mechanic will just bring him back. But hopefully we're not going to have anybody die. Deacon brings that turn meter increase, but also a drop defense, which is really good. We want to get as many debuffs that can increase our damage out there as possible. So you, if you have a weaken, if you have a Lydia, Lydia would be fantastic. Um, but if you can bring a weaken or a decreased defense. That's going to help you kill those spiderlings and do that max HP damage to the boss. Syl of the Drakes is not here for anything really other than sustain and some crowd control. So she will be stunning the spiderlings and that'll be reducing the incoming damage. Mithrala is our cleanser. That's really important. She also gives us a shield, increased defense, increased attack. She gives us a hex. She gives us a ton of really usable abilities here. But the big reason is you need a cleanser and or a block debuffs buff. <laughs> so you need at least one of those, if not both. You could certainly bring somebody in here like Pytheon. If you have Pytheon, uh, he was a fusion champion. So that would be another free champion that you could bring in here. Uh, and then finally, Artak is an HP burn champion. So I'm going to show both how direct damage can work with Wukong and how HP burns can work with Artak. I wouldn't necessarily suggest going this route, but I wanted to show that both damage sources work well for this particular fight. It's actually a little bit freeing in terms of your damage dealers, because as long as they're built well, you can bring in almost any kind of damage dealer you like into this fight, as long as they are AoE damage dealers, right? You don't want really too many single target damage dealers, like a cold heart. You could maybe fit her into this team composition, but she's really not optimal for this scenario. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the fight and we're gonna see how this team performs. All right, so I haven't really programmed the AI for this particular comp, I just put it together today. So I'm gonna manual the first round or two and see how it goes. So we wanna start with Deacon's A3, which is the turn meter fill into the drop defense so he gets his extra turn and then we do the aoe drop defense we want that drop defense on everybody that's going to help us do way more damage now we have mithrala we're going to put out a hex on everybody again that's going to spread more damage out there and then we're going to go ahead and try to nuke with wukong i don't know if he hits hard enough to actually clear this wave but if he does then we'll do it let's see so he didn't really kill the spiderlings that's too bad <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and just A1 with our attack because this wave is going to go ahead and probably be consumed, which is not a huge deal. The boss will heal off of this. And also the bigger problem is the increased attack that the boss is going to get. But since we didn't kill the waves, we're just going to go ahead and stun. Maybe we can kill one or two of these little guys here. Do some damage. Oh, actually that worked out. That was great. The hex blew up all the spiders. <laughs> that was fantastic. That worked absolutely perfectly. That was just fortuitous. I didn't plan that at all. But so, you know, we got a big chunk of damage there by killing spiderlings. So that's how you know that direct damage against the spiderlings is going to work really well. 
We're not actually doing direct damage against the boss, although you could also try that method, and we'll get a little bit more into that in a team later on. Okay, so now we have the cleanse here. We're gonna cleanse the sleep. This is something that happens when you get your turn meter reduced. And then we're just gonna start hitting these sp spiderlings with HP burns. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the HP burns out. And again, you know, if you think about it, the boss here, we can't decrease the turn meter, we can't slow them. So these spiderlings are not gonna go. They're not gonna get a chance to go. Um, so the, you know, the HP burns aren't gonna tick naturally. We have to activate it. So that's why we have to be so fast. That's why we need our turn meter increase. Uh, and our turn meter decreases and stuff like that. Obviously, again, you can't decrease the speed on the boss. So this is going to allow us to get around to our tax HP burn activation. And again, we're going to get hex out there. Hopefully that'll help even do more damage. Oh, actually, we can maybe nuke. Okay, we didn't kill that many things. But there are the HP burn massive, huge chunk. And if you want to think about the HP burn activation this way, think about it like this for our tax. He's activating the HP burns, and that's doing 3% of max HP damage per target. So that's 10 targets, that's 30% damage. Now he heals the boss by 10%, right? Because every time an HP burn goes off, the boss gets healed by 1%. So 10 spiderlings, 30% damage, 10% heal. But then all the spiderlings die. That's another 30% damage. So if our attack is killing the spiderlings with his HP burns, he's potentially doing 50% of the boss's. HP as damage, 30% and 30% plus a 10% heal. That's a ton of damage. So HP burns are still really good to bring in here if you have activations. Without activations, it can be tricky. Okay, so let's keep going. We're probably gonna kill off this boss relatively soon. All of our skills are burned though, so we're gonna have to cycle back around. So we'll just, actually we'll just let this auto run. Okay. Now, just so you know, I have Artac in a stun set. Um, so you could have him in something else, and that would potentially do more damage. Um, the boss did, in fact, consume all the spiderlings there, get a heal, and kill all the HP burns. So maybe I shouldn't have autoed this. But anyway, um, Artac, like I said, is in a stun set. That's because I use him for other content. I don't just use him here for Spider's Boss, uh, the Spider's Boss, the Spider's Boss. The spider boss, I can say it. Um, but again, you know, all free to play champions. N not a single champion that you have to pull from a shard if you've been playing for a little while. And if you're currently getting into hard mode Spider's Den, there's a pretty good chance you have Wukong. There's even a decent chance that you have Artak because that was only a couple of months ago. That was a squeaky voice thing that I just did there. Even now. But there we go. Not too bad. Um, not too fast, but again, I was, uh, that's a nice banner. I was kind of walking through this. Okay, so this is just to give you a sense of the roles that you need. I will show you the stats on these champions so you can get an idea of where they stand. I don't think these are the stats required. These are just the way that these champions are built. Okay, so as you can see here, Deacon Armstrong is at 287 speed. Remember, he also has that speed aura, so everybody's running a little faster than their speed. Um, and this number does include any area bonuses that you happen to have. I don't think I have any for Spider. The accuracy here is 516. We don't need as much, but I use him in Arena, so I like to have a lot of accuracy on him. Um, but you do need to be you know, over the 350 mark for stage 10. So the Drakes is relatively tanky. She does have decent accuracy, so she's going to land her stuns on the Spiderlings. And her speed is at 224. You can see 80,000 K. 80,000 K. That would be crazy. Just 80,000 HP here. Uh, Sun Wukong is doing okay at 100% crit rate and 250% crit damage. He is in perception gear. He's not like in Savage or anything, so that's why he's not really set up as a nuker. But he does have 5,000 attack. If you had him in a Savage set, he would probably nuke out the waves by himself. But in this particular build with Perception, uh, you know, he has the accuracy that he needs to land any debuffs. But again, I use him in Arena mostly. Mithrala here is actually running decently fast at 266 um, and tons of accuracy, which also gives her resist, by the way. Remember that her passive turns accuracy into resistance. Also fairly tanky. 
And then Artak here, like I said, he's in a stun set. You can see he's running at 227 speed, so not fast enough for stage 10 on his own without turn meter fill or a speed boost, speed buff. Uh, but he does have the accuracy to land what he needs to land. Decently tanky with 83,000 HP, although you can see he's under 2,500 defense here. So he's not really in a tank build. He's just in a high HP build. So I would definitely say good gear, good builds. Nothing crazy here. Nothing super outstanding. Probably the best built champion that I have in this team is Mithrala. But everybody else is, you know, I think within reason or at least close to reason for champions who are getting into hard mode of spider. Remember that you don't need to have the stats to get to stage 10 right away. If you can get to stage six, which doesn't require nearly these stats, then um, you can get a good bonus to your drop rates and, you know, get some extra points for tournaments and dungeon divers. Um, and it doesn't take much longer either, which is really nice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to ramp it up. We're going to go up to stage 10, and I'm going to show you my stage 10 team. Okay, here we are at stage 10, and I do have some options. My Spider 20 team is actually this team at the top here. You can see we have a reset champion with an HP burner, a direct damage from Newt, who's basically not killing spiders. He's just killing the boss. And then we have Lydia as a setup for decreased defense and weaken all in one go. So. That's a really nice team and would probably do just fine with Cardiel as my lead to get the ally attack, a cleanse, a block debuffs, and some heals. So this is a very nice team. You can also see my Spider 25 fast team. That's this team right here. Um, again, similar setup to my Spider 20 team, but instead of Newt, I'm running Sissy of Flame Tongue, so I'm running two HP burners with activation. That's really nice. But for today's video, I actually dropped the reset champion and I just went pure damage here is the team that I'm going to be running today. Um, I don't know if it's 100% on stage 20, 20, I'm sorry, stage 10 hard mode. I think it probably is. Uh, it's a pretty good team. And like I said, most of my champions are built pretty well. So you've already seen our attack, but let's go ahead and look at the stats on the other champions. Cardiel here is running at 249. He still has the same 19% speed lead that Deacon Armstrong has. I could probably get away with Deacon in this spot as well. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Lydia here is running nice and fast at 259 with accuracy of 440, decently tanky. Newt here is in Savage. Um, I think he's in S Savage and Speed or something. I don't even know what he's in, but you can see he's running at 227 with enough accuracy to land any debuffs or turn meter decrease that he might need at this level. Obviously, he can't land the turn meter decrease here on this boss. And pretty tanky, um, you know, good defense with 4200. Remember that his defense also turns into his damage. I would like more crit damage on him, but this is as good as I can get for now. Sissy of Flame Tongue at 239 speed. She's got 4K attack, 100% crit rate, 218% crit damage. Those aren't critical here. We really need her HP burns and HP burns activ activations. So you can drop her crit damage if you need to to get the accuracy that you need. The accuracy is more important than the crit damage, but she does hit decently hard. So she will not only burn the spiderlings, she will blow them up. And so if you can get the stats onto her like this, you may as well. Finally, we have Artac. You've already seen his build. Now, one thing that's important here about Sissia, I said I was going to mention, is that she has her HP burn is her A3. And it says grant an ex grants an extra turn if an HP burn debuff is placed on all enemies. Remember that the spider boss is immune. So Sissia Flame Tongue will never get her extra turn in spider hard mode. It just won't happen. So the important thing here is that she can't go directly into her activation, right? So this is her activation. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have her open with her HP burn, and Artak is going to open with his HP burn activation, because Sissia is faster than Artak. If it was the other way around, in terms of speed, you would just switch that. So Sissia opens with her HP burn, Artak activates her HP burn. Then when Sissia comes back around, she's going to use her own activation. So we'll activate a second time, and then Artak will put out a second stack of HP burns, and we'll cycle through. Now with the reset champion, this could be even faster, but I wanted to have Newt in the team because he's actually faster than the reset champion. So this works out great. So we should open with Lydia's debuffs, and then we're going to get some HP burns from Sissia, well, after we get Cardio's ally attack. So it's going to be Sissia's HP burns, and then it's going to be Artak's 
activation and you can see the huge chunk of damage and now Newt's going to come in and smack the boss. You can see how good that is. Okay, boss does get a heal, gets a turn. We couldn't kill all of the spiderlings there on this round. So it gets slowed down a little bit here. Now we get the block debuffs. That's nice in case we need it. You can see that our tech went next. And so he gets his HP burns out there and then Sissia activates them and we get another chunk of damage. These HP burns will tick because these spiderlings aren't going to be consumed yet. So when these spiderlings go, they will tick any HP burns that are out there. And we're almost done. There we go. 16 turns, a minute one. Not super fast. There are certainly faster teams out there. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I think this is a 100% team. I've never seen it fail. Um, I've only been running it for a few days, actually. I had stalled out at stage eight, um, and I didn't really push it for a couple of months. And then just in preparation for this video, I started to push because I figured I could get to stage 10. And in fact, as you can see, it's pretty good. So again, you don't need these particular champions. I don't think Cardiel is needed at all here. You could certainly keep Deacon in that role. You just need the speeds. And so the speed aura was helpful here. Um, but a turn meter fill champion would actually be maybe even more valuable than Cardiel's like cleanse and block debuffs because we actually didn't get hit by any spiderlings at all. Okay, so that is it. As you can see, there are some differences you have to account for, but the fight is actually fairly similar to the spider fights that you've already done. And really, it's going to be more about the stats and speed tuning your team so that you get the right skills in the right order. Whether you go with direct damage, which is great, you can do damage on the boss with a champion like Newt. You can do champion uh, direct damage to the spiderlings with AoE champions like Wukong or whoever you happen to have. You can still use those HP burners you were using in normal mode. I think that the spider hard mode dungeon is actually a fairly comfortable step up for most players. So if you've been avoiding it just because you thought it was going to be extra hard, it's really not. It's really not. Go ahead, bring your stage 25 team in, see how far they will naturally push, and then start to make tweaks at that point with the free gear removal that we've got going on right now. It's just a matter of time and energy. You don't have to worry about your silver. Okay, so that is it. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. What is your team composition? How fast can you clear stage 10? I love to hear all of those things. So if you think you could maybe help me get this down to like a 30 second clear, I'd appreciate any tips that you may have. And also just one last reminder about the live stream tomorrow. It won't be a raid live stream. It'll be a Pal World live stream. It'll be on my second channel. So if you're expecting to see my live stream here on this channel this weekend, it's going to be on the other channel. I'm still live streaming. You just have to go looking for me. I hope you come along. Okay, thanks so much for hanging out. I have been Colred, and I will see you in another video soon.